Wow, bud, you're like really hamming it up right now. Overall, my experience with having an LGD, with having a Great Pyrenees has been a really positive one. If he had a voice, that's what he would sound like. Hey guys. We're gonna go find us some goats and a livestock guardian dog. Just found them. They're all the way back there at the oak tree. Uthridge barking. Wasn't sure who I was just yet. Hey bud. What are your goats doing, bud? Hi. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, and this is Uhtred. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys an update on our now eight month old Great Pyrenees puppy, Uhtred here, who is our livestock guardian dog in training. And this video is gonna be a part of my series that I started a while ago. And now he's working, look at this. He heard something. I don't know if it was a guinea or maybe one of the goats sneezed out there, but he heard something and he just took off with a growl and he's checking it out. And that's his job, you know, he's he's listening to me talking though, so. What was it, bud? We tried come. His recall also is really quite excellent, maybe better than any dog I've ever had. Uh, he He's a good, good boy. If you haven't seen my playlist on training an LGD from eight weeks to reliable guardian, however long that might take, I will link that playlist up above here and you can check that out. If you're not subscribed, if you're interested in livestock guardian dogs, if you have goats in particular, or you're looking for um, a solution to help to maybe protect your poultry or something like that, I definitely recommend that you subscribe, that you check out that playlist and that you interact with me in the comment section down below. Ask me questions. Um, I do have a lot of just personal experience of training dogs and I have studied the human dog relationship for almost my entire life and I have had a lot of success with training some really brilliant dogs. Uhtred is a great dog. He has been a fantastic guardian. He has taught me so much. He I'm finally giving you guys an update today on Uhtred, how it's been going, some of the mistakes I've made so far in his training, um, maybe some things I wish I would have done differently, and uh, how he's doing overall. So let's get right to it. So Uhtred is eight months old now, like I said, and he has been living full time with the goats since we got him when he was eight weeks old. We kept him in the garage for two nights. Initially, uh, he was, you know, really young and the weather was a little rough and we just, you know, needed to kind of collect ourselves as far as how we were going to introduce him to the herd. And that was a slow process. He was with the does uh, for quite a while, but because our goats were pregnant and, you know, he is a rambunctious puppy. He might be a big puppy, but he is still a puppy. He's a lot better now, of course, than he was, but he really struggled uh, as all puppies do with, you know, wanting to play. And there was a lot of, you know, reprimanding that went along with that, of course. And that's part of training any dog, but LGDs are so unique in the sense that the expectations that you have to have of them if you want to raise a good livestock guardian dog, you have to be, you know, consistent in the message and the expectations you're setting with that dog from day one. So Uhtred could very likely be around 120 pounds when he's fully matured. And that is a very big dog. He is a very big dog already. I don't want a 120 pound dog chasing my goats and becoming a predator. I don't want a 120 pound dog killing my chickens. I don't want him jumping on me. I don't want him 
to be, um, you know, knocking children over. Uh, I want him to be a safe dog with my family. I want him to protect my livestock. I want him to at least keep predators away from my poultry. I want him to not kill my poultry and I want him to stay in the fence. So these were the main expectations that I had of Uhtred from day one. And um, I'm just going to share with all of you kind of how he has been meeting or not meeting those expectations. The number one mistake that I made with Uhtred was not realizing the impact that the electric fence was having on him in those early months of having him with the bucks. He got shocked quite a few times. It was mainly due to the fact I had um, water buckets up near the fence and while he was drinking water, what was happening was the, the bucks were kind of wrestling with each other like they do and they were knocking into him sometimes and he was hitting that fence. Once we moved that fence and I realized what was happening and where that timid behavior was coming from, then we really made progress. You know, that's 4,000 volts of electricity and it hurts to get hit by that fence. I've been hit by it, my husband has, we've felt it. I've seen the animals get shocked by it, you know, when it's fully functioning and it's not grounded out somewhere, uh, it hits hard. I mean, it's supposed to because, you know, strong electric fences are what keep your animals safe and in their pen. And that's our, one of our biggest goals is to keep animals in their pen on a farm, at least for us. The biggest thing that I'm working on right now with Uhtred is uh, him establishing boundaries with the ducks while he's eating. I want him to be able to eat in peace. Now that he's getting more mature, he wants to keep his food to himself and he's been really um, getting a little aggressive with the ducks over his food. And I'm about to show you guys some footage of what that has looked like. This is actually from last night. Uhtred is teaching the ducks to not come near his bowl and I am monitoring the situation. Hey! Okay, bud. Now, while he has right to do that, with a juvenile duck or baby, he could severely maim or kill them with a paw swipe like that. You're okay, bud, just eat. And he doesn't have any problems with me going up to him and I can pet him and brush him and all that while he eats. I'm not worried about like food aggression with humans at all, but he has been letting these ducks eat out of his bowl for a long time off and on. And I've tried to discourage it, but they're very persistent. Good boy, that's okay, good boy. See, like that is good behavior. I've also been a little bit concerned about Uhtred's weight. And my vet was here uh, about a month or so ago and she met Uhtred and, you know, just kind of, you know, introduced him to her. She didn't mention having any concerns that he looked too thin. I talked to some other LGD owners and breeders online and I shared pictures of him and, you know, asked for people who are much more experienced than me in their um, you know, thoughts on how he looked for where he is at his age for his breed. And overall, the feedback I got, and I got a lot of it, so I'm appreciative of that. It's great to hear experiences from other people. Um, the feedback I got overall is that he does look lean, but that Great Pyrenees in general go through this really lean, awkward growing stage. It is overall better for a large breed dog like a Great Pyrenees who grow really fast and who can be prone to, you know, joint and bone issues to be on the leaner side when they're young because as those bones are developing, keeping weight off of those joints is really critical for healthy bone and joint development. So overall, um, I'm not I'm not very concerned at this point after talking with them. Uh, I will mention it to my vet next time I talk to her. What I'm doing 
is going ahead and changing up the food. I've been feeding the Blue Diamond large breed puppy formula and uh, about a month and a half ago started mixing in adult dog food as well to kind of give him more nutrition, more protein, more um, well-roundedness in his diet. I also of course feed eggs both cooked and raw sometimes um, you know on a weekly basis he's getting eggs he's getting a lot of additional healthy fats tallow and olive oil and things like that he's getting meat i just gave him a chicken carcass when i started making bone broth the other day you're a good boy what did you get you got this oh that's a good boy yes he's getting um some supplements to help for healthy bone and joint development and he's got a really healthy, beautiful coat. He's super, super active. You know, he's got this like two acre pasture that he's running through all day long and he works all night patrolling. So he's active, he's lean. Would I like to see a little bit more weight on him? Yes. I'm also going to run a fecal on him. I have my own microscope, something I haven't done a video on yet because it's something that's new to me and I'm new to doing my own fecals and I'm still learning. So I will share that with you guys at some point. I'm gonna do a fecal and just look for some uh, typical parasites like roundworm, pinworm, tapeworm, and I will deworm him if necessary. He has excellent recall and you know of course I attribute that to extensive training and repetition which is the key to training a dog uh, repetition patience and consistency uh, he's a good boy and you can see how big he is he's grown so much in these I guess six months now that I've had him and been working with him where did Uchard come from I got him from a working farm in Ohio. Both of his parents are working livestock guardian dogs and he was raised in a barn. He was raised with uh, little horses and goats and chickens and all of that. So he doesn't know any other life other than being with livestock. And that is what these dogs have been bred for thousands of years to do. That is why I decided to, you know, put him with the livestock from day number two and um, you know keep him with the livestock because I wanted a livestock guardian and I want a dog who um, is a hundred percent at peace with living with livestock and protecting them. Now that he's had his fill and he got attention, got brushed, he could care less that the ducks are in his bowl. We're around his food, picking at the leftovers. You be a good boy, okay? See you later, bud. Watch your goats. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uhtred and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Looking forward to sharing more of this journey of uh, training my first LGD with all of you. Uh, I hope that this information was in some way helpful to some of you who are thinking about getting an LGD, who have an LGD, who want an LGD, who are, you know, way dreaming and researching way down the road about what it would be like to have an LGD. Um, I hope that there was something in this video that you liked, that you, uh, you know, found thought provoking as far as the human dog relationship. If you want to see more, comment down below. Let me know that you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. Share my video uh, if you're so inclined to do so. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I love you. I'm a goat. I think I'm a goat. I want to be a goat.